Yeah, thank you very much, uh, the, uh, the Chairman, dear colleague. And uh, yeah, it's a huge honor and pleasure for me to, to be here uh, in front of you. Uh, yeah, everything has al already been said by uh, Gustavo. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm here now in the uh, yeah, uh, delicate position uh, to. Well, it's not that de delicate, huh? but uh, to uh, yeah, c compliment uh, uh, Gustavo's uh, uh, analysis of uh, the French um, uh, codification. Well, Gustavo was a little bit the bad cop uh, of codification, so I can be the good cop uh, of uh, French codification. <laughs> I, I, I hope that yeah, it uh, does not give too much the impression of uh, yeah, the, uh, the lack of coherence in the French doctrine, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, because yeah, we are very eager about this dialogue. So. I want to start by, by thanking, of course, uh, the organizers, uh, yeah, um, uh, the, the Ferenc Madl, Madl's Institute uh, and the um, uh, Central European Academy, a special thank, of course, to, to Emmet as well, to Silvia uh, and the entire staff, because it was really great uh, yeah, uh, welcome that we had here. So thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, I will be yeah, continuing the discussion on the codification of, of civil law uh, in France. And uh, well, I will start with one first strong statement. Uh, civil law in France is the code civil. Uh, and uh, well, we have many indications for that. Um, some, start, some, some, some strong uh, statements. Uh, one by Jean Carbonnier, uh, who clearly said uh, the uh, code civil, the civil code, is uh, the civil constitution of France. Uh, and whereas uh, the, constitution, constitu the political constitutions uh, yeah, have been changed so many times in France, there was at least a stability with regard to the civil constitution. Um, uh, in line with that, uh, Napoleon's statement uh, that the Code Civil is uh, his achievement that uh, no uh, military defeat will erase also stands and still stands uh, yeah, for the influence that Napoleon had on uh, the French uh, nation. And then, uh, last element, the Code Civil is also uh, lieu de mémoire, uh, um, a site of memory. It's uh, the, the site by which uh, the presence of law, uh, the presence of use, uh, uh, is uh, guaranteed in the collective memory of the French people. And with those uh, three statements, you can already see uh, how attached uh, the French society is to its civil code. Um, yeah, I, I see that as uh, yeah, a foreign um, uh, spectator or observer uh, of this place of the French civil code because I'm not French. Uh, so I try to understand here the perspective of uh, the French with regard uh, to their code civil. And well, we have many illustrations. Uh, if we think now about the last uh, emblematic uh, yeah, um, uh, fights or uh, evolutions with regard to societal problems, marriage, uh, parenthood, um, new ways uh, of establishing uh, or of, uh, procreation. Uh, well, all those fights targeted also uh, for having a recognition in the court civil, in the civil court. So the civil court has really a sy symbolic value uh, that is very strong for um, the French society. But of course, not only for the French society, uh, for French scholars, civil scholars uh, or civil law scholars, uh, the civil code is also, of course, tremendously important. And uh, where well, there is some uh, pride about the civil code and we, we, we try uh, to do our best to, to, to promote it, even though we are very much aware about the limitations um, of uh, the codification. And the code also plays uh, a, a very important role for the judge, and I will try to explain that a, li a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, it's certainly at the heart also of the attention uh, of the judge, at least when he intervenes in uh, the field of civil law. But uh, yeah, I will focus now a little bit on the yeah, most recent evolutions. So my uh, yeah, position will be to see how the civil code evolved over the last 20 years. Huh? So we had the bicentenary uh, in 2004, uh, and I uh, will focus on what happened after uh, the uh, bicentenary of the civil code. And it was quite clear in 2004 that uh, the civil code was outdated by then. Uh, and of course, there were huge celebrations about the quality uh, of uh, the civil code, about uh, uh, yeah, um, the, the uh, importance that uh, this code had. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, um, it was accepted that there is a major uh, need for a reform. Uh, and we can just take a couple of examples, but I will be faster. But yeah, tort law, uh, which, has almost, yeah, which has not been 
reformed legislatively in the civil code. And some adaptations, yes, but uh, very limited. And the heart of tort law uh, yeah, was left um, aside. Uh, and there was also an awareness about technical deficiencies uh, of the civil code. And uh, there was a, a report uh, by, the World, um, uh, by the World Bank doing business uh, that hurt it a lot, uh, French scholars, because uh, yeah, the out, um, conclusion of that report was to say, well, French law is completely inadequate uh, for international uh, commerce and trade, uh, and therefore there was this awareness, okay, we have to maintain uh, the attractivity of the French economy, and therefore we also need an attractive uh, law, we need attractive legal rules. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was one of the aspects, and then on the other hand, uh, yeah, there was this, this clear awareness about uh, the uh, need to adapt uh, the code to social and economic uh, realities and trends. So 2004, I think we can really say that, yeah, the, the code was praised huh, as a monument uh, of French law, but the need uh, to reform it was uh, uh, quite clear, uh, but it was, was also clear that if the code needed to be reformed, it was in order to maintain the central position of the civil code within the legal system. Uh, the civil code has to be the main uh, instrument of reference uh, in order to understand the French uh, civil law. Uh, now I will yeah, be relatively quick on some of the main drivers of uh, the reforms that have taken place. I think you have some uh, drivers that are internal, internal pressure, because the French society evolves and therefore uh, uh, wants adaptations in its law. And on the other hand, you have external uh, pressure, uh, and this was quite strong for the French Civil Code. Uh, uh, the scholars were aware about all the nice reforms that took place in other countries. And well, the, the German uh, reform of uh, the law of obligations was certainly a, a strong impetus uh, for uh, France to say, okay, if the Germans um, made a reform, okay, we also need to reform our civil code, uh, because otherwise we will be uh, lagging completely behind. Uh, and you also had uh, the uh, European uh, project for unification and the project for uh, European civil code uh, well, uh, was accepted, uh, no, was um, welcomed in France uh, under the perspective, okay, if there is this pressure on the European level, uh, well, we must reform our national code so that it becomes crystal clear that a European civil code is not acceptable. Uh, and there was really this strong opposition to the idea of a European civil code and one of the best ways for fighting against the European Civil Code is to change the national code. And therefore, you cannot no longer say, okay, European is modern and national is outdated. Uh, the modern version of law w was the French law. So that's why uh, here uh, there was this uh, yeah, strong incentive uh, to reform. But of course, uh, reforming uh, was not uh, the, the uh, only uh, goal or the only objective. Uh, reforming uh, has to go uh, along with uh, conserving. Uh, we are lawyers after all, <laughs> so you, we need to identify what in the code has to be kept uh, and what needs to be reformed. And therefore the uh, reforms uh, were really uh, seen as a recodification, yes, but a recodification step by step. Uh, uh, one of the difficult uh, questions is whether there was a systemic view uh, in terms of reforming the civil code. Um, certainly on some aspects, uh, the, this approach was taken to say, okay, we must have a systemic approach to how we reform the code. But you also see in many fields that it was a sectoral approach that was taken. Uh, and just, yeah, some changes were made, but without affecting the overall structure uh, of the code. So I will try here to present a little bit uh, the, those main uh, reforms over the last 20 years, uh, yeah, keeping an eye also on who were uh, the actors uh, of those reforms, because you, you have, of course, on the one hand, uh, yeah, the, the legislator as one of the actors of the reform, but it was mentioned, uh, the uh, Superior Commission of Codification, well, that's uh, a, a body of the government. And the government also played a quite important role in the reforms, because a lot of the reforms were adopted by ordin ordin ordinance, ord ordinance uh, of the government, uh, including experts, uh, and therefore uh, the parliament was yeah, controlling what the government did, but left a lot of the operative parts to the government. And judges also played a very important role. I will try to explain it, of course, not in modifying uh, the code, but in modifying heavily how the code is to be applied. 
Uh, and yeah, with those in, in, in mind, I will, yeah, it will of course be just a very rapid um, uh, overview about uh, those evolutions, uh, keeping an eye on the general structure of the French civil code uh, and yeah, focusing um, yeah, more deeply a little bit on the uh, law of obligations because yeah, for civil law, of course, this has um, a major uh, place uh, yeah, in, in civil. So I will try here to explain um, how uh, uh, yeah, the uh, evolutions over the last 20 years illustrate or confirm uh, that the civil code in France is the civil constitution of France uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, how the civil code uh, is the foundation of the civil order of France. And here I make this distinction uh, between uh, civil constitution, the constitution of the society, and the civil order. Uh, for the civil order, I will focus more on the law of obligations, on the technical aspects, whereas the first element underlines really the uh, overall importance of the code, not only for uh, technical aspects, but also for those very societal, foundational aspects, uh, such as what is marriage, what is parenthood. Uh, and I will give some illustrations here. So let's start with, uh, uh, with the illustration of the civil code as the civil constitution uh, of France. And here, uh, well, I will focus on, on two aspects. The first one, the general part of the civil code. Uh, it's only six articles, huh? so it can be, <laughs> can be uh, rather uh, quick. Um, and for those six articles, where there was no legislative reform, almost none, um, but nonetheless, there was what I call a revolution in the way in which uh, those articles are to be applied. And then for this, here my, my second subpart, and uh, I will focus on uh, now uh, the law of persons and family law, which is uh, the first uh, part of the civil code, for which uh, we can see that uh, here we have a social evolution, or perhaps social revolutions, that call for a reform of the civil code. Uh, so this will be here the second aspect. I will start uh, with the legal, legal revolution without the legislative reform. First six articles of the civil code. Here we see the French approach to codification, very rational approach. The first six articles of the French civil code, right, they give the main rules as to what is a legal system in the French understanding of it. Uh, article one, when does the law enter uh, into force? Article two, what is the temporal scope of application of the law? Article three, what is the territorial scope of application? Article three was the uh, article for the entire private international law for almost 200 years. Article four, the judge cannot refuse to render justice, uh, prohibition of the denial of justice. Article five, the judge can make no precedence. Uh, the judge cannot decide by general rules that will be binding for the future. Article six, public policy is off the limits of uh, party autonomy, of freedom of the, uh, of the parties. Uh, those six articles, they provide for the general framework of what is civil law. But not only what is civil law, of what is law, what is the rule of law in the context of France. And it defines what is the power of the judge and what are the limits of the power of the judge. And those articles, well, they haven't changed. Article 1 did a little bit because with the modernization, of course, uh, electronic publication made a change in when the law can enter into force. But the others did not change. But the way in which they are applied changed dramatically. Uh, in 2004, there was still this huge debate of whether case law is a formal source of law, a source of yeah, no normative rules. Our days, there is a consensus that case law in France is a normative source that case law is uh, among yeah, those sources of, of uh, yeah, what is law, what is the, what is the use. Uh, and even the way in which judges apply the law changed dramatically, uh, with the po possibility for the judge to uh, use a proportionality control and to set aside a law that in general is compatible with uh, higher norms, but in one practical case does con uh, contradict it. So here, the, the duties and the powers of the judge have tra dramatically changed over the last 20 years, even though the civil code remained completely unchanged. This is in contrast now with what happened to uh, well, the law of persons and family law, where here well, the, uh, there was no general reform of the civil code. But when we uh, think about the social evolution in this context, of course, changes have been uh, tremendous. 
uh, marriage, uh, with the opening of marriage to same-sex couples. Uh, what is parenthood? Uh, procreation. Uh, you can also think about the law of persons, uh, yeah, the protection of the human body after death, that's in the civil code. The protection of human dignity is not in the French constitution, it's in the civil code. Uh, and all those elements, uh, which are really crucial for eth ethical considerations in France, they are in the civil code. And there is an ongoing discussion as to how uh, yeah, um, bioethical, bioethical rules have to be uh, reformed in France, and they also target at the civil code. Of course, the civil code does not provide for all rules, just the most fundamental ones, and then you need to check in other codes how those rules that are in the civil code are implemented. But nonetheless, uh, those major social evolutions, they find a translation into the civil code. So here, uh, the, the civil co code is certainly uh, yeah, a, a main element of reference for the French society, and therefore, uh, I argue that uh, this idea that the civil code is a civil constitution of France still stands. But it's not only the civil constitution of France as a, a society that is based uh, on the rule of law, that is a legal society in which you know that a judge will always be able to uh, find a, a solution to your dispute. Uh, the civil code is also uh, here the f foundation of a civil order. And a civil order here really in the way of a law of obligations. Uh, the, the civil uh, law is not only there in order to deal with those uh, strongly social considerations, it's also there in order yeah, to provide for a framework for trade, for exchange, for economic uh, relations, uh, for which perhaps we don't really care uh, who will win in the end, uh, who will get 1,000 euros, but we must have legal certainty, we must have predictability. Uh, and here, the civil code also uh, yeah, uh, evolved, uh, of course, tremendously, uh, and I will just present the, the main reforms, uh, which I think uh, underline the idea that yes, the civil court uh, is catching up uh, with evolving economic needs. Uh, but this is an, uh, yeah, uh, a movement that is still incomplete, uh, and uh, I will also show that uh, the civil code is still lagging behind uh, with uh, some expected reforms. I'm sorry because I have to be very brief here on, on those aspects, but well, I will start with uh, the catching up with modernity uh, and with uh, the economic needs. Of course, it has already been mentioned, uh, the major reform in 2016 on uh, contracts law, uh, the general uh, regime of obligations, and uh, yeah, uh, proof uh, shows uh, that here the French legal system really was eager to adapt in order to well, be accessible, in order to be uh, attractive. And well, then when you take a closer look at it, for us as academics, well, it's absolutely comfortable, uh, it's, it's amazing. We can take that law, and with that law, well, we can explain uh, what is uh, contracts law in France. Uh, we start uh, with a definition of what is a contract. Uh, then we go on with uh, freedom of contracts and its limit, uh, public policy. We continue with uh, Pacta Sunt Savanda. After Pacta Sunt Savanda, good faith. Uh, so we see here all, right, all the main principles, uh, the guiding principles of uh, what uh, contracts law is based on, and we find them here very accessible in our code. So here we see uh, that the French Civil Code, well, it's providing for this, those main concepts for argumentation. It's, uh, well, the main element of reference if you want to understand what is the vocabulary, what is the grammar you have to use if you want to understand uh, yeah, French law. And it, it's not limited to just the main principles, huh? because really the uh, idea is, well, you also have to be able to predict the outcome. Um, the powers of the judges, they will be defined uh, when the judge will have the possibility to adapt. Uh, and this is not only here with regard to the concept of obligation itself, it's really taking into account the practical needs, uh, the practical importance of that civil law. And here's a strong illustration of that. Of course, you have on the one hand that the law of obligations, when it was reformed, included the rules on proof. Uh, and if you cannot prove uh, your <laughs> legal obligation, well, what is your legal obligation worth? So here, even this link between proof and uh, the substance of the obligation is already uh, underlining how important uh, the practical consequences are. But on the other hand, if you now take the second the major reform of the civil code, uh, the reform on securities, uh, security interests, 
uh, and uh, guarantees, here you also see what matters in practice. It's not whether you have an obligation or not, it's whether you can get it executed or not, whether you can get it performed or not. What do you need if you want to be sure about your prospects of performance? Right, you need securities or you need guarantees. And they have been reformed now recently as really a, yeah, a necessary prolongation of the reform of the law of obligations. If you do not know how to secure your obligations, well, what will your obligations be worth? And here this idea of predictability shows that well, French civil law over the last 20 years yeah, has understood that it needs to adapt. Uh, that if it wants to uh, meet here the economic needs, uh, the needs of uh, the society under those economic considerations. But, uh, well, uh, there is a but. The civil code is still lagging behind with uh, some major reforms. Uh, and so I will <laughs> terminate with this. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, yeah, uh, but, 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 yeah, more nuanced approach uh, to uh, what is still uh, lacking to uh, the recodification. Uh, of the civil law in France. And here we really have a couple of ongoing uh, reform processes, uh, reforms. Uh, you can think about uh, tort law, which is a little bit uh, a sea serpent of the French reform. Uh, well, uh, we are always talking about re the necessity to reform tort law in France. Uh, we have now the draft by the Senate. Whether it will really be achieved or not, so, uh, it's quite doubtful. But judges deal with it, uh, so it's not even uh, that big an issue. Property law, there was also a proposal uh, to change it, but well, it has not been changed. And of course, property law played an important role under uh, the French Revolution, uh, where you can say the civil code was based on uh, uh, liberty, uh, freedom, uh, equality, and property. That were, were the three main principles, probably, of the civil code after the French Revolution. And then you can think about two other uh, reforms that are still ongoing, uh, special contracts uh, and private international law. But for both, the prospects are, are not that good, uh, at least if they have to be uh, seen as a systemic reform. Uh, there might be reforms, but they will probably be just uh, sectoral reforms because here the... Is it because the practical importance is not strong enough or is too strong and therefore would require more attention than what could have been given? Uh, but yeah, we see that the process remains incomplete. Uh, so there can be some frustration uh, with regard to how the um, uh, yeah, French uh, code adapts itself uh, to uh, the modern needs of, of civil law. But uh, nonetheless, uh, if I want to, to come here to a conclusion, I think that the, the last 20 years, they show that the, the code civil, that the civil code, is a living instrument. Uh, it's not something that is petrified. It is capable uh, of change. And here, this uh, yeah, living instrument, it's, it's really based uh, on this balance that has to be found between conserving what needs to be conserved, uh, what is worth of being conserved, and reforming. Uh, and here, this balance is implemented uh, by, by the interplay uh, of the legal actors. Uh, legal actors, well, of course, you have the legislator, but you also have the government and the experts. You have the judges, who are one main actor of this legal evolution. And you have the practitioners. Uh, you have the citizens. We mentioned them. And all those together, uh, they uh, find the balance between conserving and reforming. And therefore, the code, uh, uh, the, the code is not just a text. Uh, it's a method, uh, and here it's a method that is really at the heart of uh, the understanding and of the operation of civil law, uh, at, uh, at least in France, but uh, I think more than that. And here the code, it's really the, the promise of uh, a national society uh, that is based on the respect of legal expectations, uh, legal expectations that are respectful of fundamental social values, and uh, here, the last two decades, they confirm with regard to the French Civil Code that uh, the Civil Code is a foundation of the society in France. Uh, and uh, it's not only a monument you know, of the French society. More than that, it's a, a structuring and dynamic pillar of the French nation and uh, a legal model for the nations in general. And uh, with it, let me terminate uh, yeah, my, my ode to code, Long vie au Code Civil des Français, Long live the codification of civil law. Thank you for your attention.